true. Amen. Hey! 
Amen. You're in the presence of the Lord. Wonderful here today. Amen. Hallelujah. Mrs. Hollis passed out and started having seizures prayer for her. Yes, let's everybody stand right now. We've got a prayer request. Somebody that has passed out, a Mrs. Hollis, has passed out and started having seizures. We need to pray for her right now. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, in we lift up Jesus, a, a Mrs. Lord, Hollis, and we just want to thank you and praise you. Uh, Father, we thank you and praise you for the power of, of, uh, of prayer. I thank you, Father, that you said, you said for us to lay hands on and pray and that you will do the work. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come against the cause of seizure and we pull you down. We command you to get under the name of Jesus. Do not arise again. We speak Nahum 1 9. You cannot rise again against her in Jesus' name. And we praise you, Lord. Yeah, right now, restoring her health and her strength, Lord. We speak to health and strength right now in Jesus. Jesus name. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Hey, thank God for Jesus. Amen. We ready to get in the word this morning. Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that? Oh, thank God. What does it say on the screen? Oh, my words are on fire. My goodness, where are we going today? Woo! Uh, first, before uh, we get going, I do want to make an announcement that uh, Gabe Hogan and his lovely bride will be here Wednesday night ministering in music and song and uh, preaching and come, 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 come. And, uh, and then this coming Tuesday night is men's Bible study. Say this out loud, 6.30 to 7.30. 6.30 to 7.30, men's Bible study here. Jackie will be hosting and, and uh, come out and uh, just glean from the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Tuesday night, men's Bible study. Wednesday night is Gabe Hogan and his bride ministering here. All right. And um, uh, here, we, here we go. James chapter 3 is where we're going to start. James, if everybody turn to James chapter 3, and uh, I preach out of the uh, old King James Version, and uh, you just follow along with whatever version you're in today. James chapter 3, verse 3 through 8. We're going to talk about the tongue. We're going to talk about our tongues today. And I've got quite a few scriptures that <clears throat> I'm going to give you. Uh, you know, uh, in, in one place, the tongue is, a, is something that, uh, that can either give you life or destroy you. In another place, the power of the word is in the, the tongue. And so today, uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to start right here in chapter 3, verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Say their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever they, the governor listeth. So a great ship is turned by a little wheel, if you will, under the direction of a man. Verse 5, even so, now I want you to look at this, that, uh, that God is comparing the tongue to a horse that can be, uh, that can be a brought subject 
by just a bit in its mouth and that a ship can be directed out on the great seas just by the, by the turn of the helm. But now he's comparing the tongue to those great things. Look at verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire. Say this out loud. My tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it, say it, it, it defileth how much? Whole. How much? Whole. It defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and, and it is set on fire of hell. So you know what? We, uh, we, in this, we in this lifetime, we, uh, we will look at um, what we say and what we do very minute. We've been taught to do that. Well, what is the old saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But the truth is, that is opposite. That is absolutely opposite. That words can either encourage, uplift, uh, can... Uh, be words uh, that is encouraging to you. Listen, how many times that you've been, you know, felt like you could, you were so low, you could sit on a Kleenex box and swing your legs. But somebody would give you a call just checking on you or send you through a text just checking on you that it was like when you, when you got done with that, that you felt uplifted, something changed in you. That's how powerful that the Lord gave us in our tongues. But yet we use our tongues, it said, even to change the course of nature. That's powerful. Isn't that powerful? That power that God gave us. But see, we've got to realize, we've got to understand that it really is important. And I'm going to give you a scripture. I'm going to give you a word that's not in my scriptures. But, um, but it also says that we will stand before the God of this universe, the great God, the creator of all things. We're going to stand before him and give an account. Do you know what give an account means? We're going to answer. We're going to answer to him for every idle Word. Now, let me tell you what idle is. Idle is empty. So for every empty word that I speak, I've, well, I'm telling you, I didn't want to preach this. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you up front. But you know what? It's the word. And so what he's saying to us today, he's not giving us condemnation today. He's saying, starting today, let's watch over our words. Let's be careful of how we talk and what we say and, and how we talk about one another. Amen? Amen. 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 It's, he's, he says that this tongue is a fire. And it's a, there's a, it, it will either cause a world of iniquity. And uh, Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, you know, there are times that uh, you, you may feel great. Because I've had, listen, I've had this happen to me. Because, you know, out and about, they'll see me. Sister Barbara, hey, Sister Barbara. You know, and they'll come over and talk to me. And, uh, and, and have you ever had this happen? You felt just great that day when you got up. And you run into someone out there that you know. And the first words they said to you, do you feel all right? And you're thinking, yeah, I, I, I feel great. I feel great. Well, I just thought you looked a little hollow-eyed today. <laughs> I just thought you looked a little under the weather. Is there something going on? And you're thinking, well, is there something going on? You know, did I, did I miss that? Those words changed your thinking about yourself that day. Okay, so if the words are that powerful... I want you to get this today. I want you to understand how powerful you are in the kingdom of God. How that you can change. Listen, I was laying before the Lord yesterday. Uh, began to walk in my bedroom. I just shut myself in. 
And the Lord began to give me things of a future events. He gave me some revelation things that I'm not free to share yet. I find it amazing that some things he gave me about Renee Carr, who lived in McMinnville, Oregon. And as he began to move, it was as if she was standing there in the room, and I'm and the Lord is just talking to her through my through my vocal cords. It was cra- it was wasn't crazy. It was just I'd never had that happen to me before. And I wasn't out of the, my prayer closet probably not even an hour. And my phone rang, and it was Renee Carr calling from McMinnville, Oregon. And I already had. She said, I, 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 she began to tell me some things she needed me to stand with her for. But I already had it, see, because I got it in the prayer closet. Okay, so is it important? Is it important in this kingdom for us to stay ready, stay alert, stay on course? Stay on course and on point. Amen. But see, we can do all those things, but if we don't keep our words in order. And if it doesn't go along with the word of God, if, if my words in me is saying, boy, I'm telling you, I am, uh, I've, got to, I've got this going on and that going on, and I'm, and I'm feeding it with the fire of my words. I want you to see this today. Whatever you've got going there, that if you could picture that that thing that you're battling, that you've, that you've got going on. Okay, I can, my sister Linda, I'm going to use you because I know she loves me. Uh, Linda had some surgery done, and, and uh, she's had some after effects from that thing in her leg and some swelling and, and, and some things going on. Now, she has two choices. She can either with the fire of her tongue feed it, that it gets worse, or with the fire of her tongue, she's going to feed it, that it will become better and better and better. Because, see, the Word says that we increase. We We increase. So don't just take that in money because, uh, you know, God owns everything anyway. But what are we going to do? And I'll show you how to do this. Father, thank you. Uh, So so I'm going to use my sister again, that every day she gets up and the symptom is there and she's got this going on, she's done. She's exhausted all the avenues of what she can do with it. Is that right? Go to the doctor, did all these things, and, and pray. we prayed, and we've done everything we know to do. Okay, so now then, either the fire of her tongue every day that she's going to, and it seems like there was a scripture that, uh, that the Lord gave me to give you. Um, yes, that's it, yes, about the woman touching the hem of the garden. And if you've had some things that's been done by man, surgeries or this taken out or something put in or whatever, that, um, that you know, you think, well, I can't change this. You know, there's no use of me praying for it. But see, the woman who was after Jesus, remember, that touched him of his garment. Okay, the Bible says that she had, uh, had actually, she had exhausted all her funds, she had spent all of her money and had been under a doctor's care for 12 years. So we do not know what they did or did not do to this poor woman. But that's our word right there that we can stand on. Okay. So now then, Linda, every day, and she told me this morning, every day she does this. She says, I'm touching Jesus in the same way that woman in the Bible did. I'm touching him garden, and I'm being made whole. I'm not going to be. See, if you put it in the future, you're going you're gonna to reach out. No, you're not going to get it. But see, you got to bring it into the right now because the Word of God is a living Word, and it's a right now Word, you understand? Okay, so now then, every day she's saying, you know what? I'm touching Jesus. I'm touching Jesus, just like that woman in the Bible, and I'm being made whole. But see, she can say that all day long, but if, if she don't believe it, and nothing going to change. But the moment that her faith was released and she believes it, that, hey, what Jesus did for that woman, he's going to do for me, and I'm being made whole. I'm telling you, there is nothing impossible. Nothing impossible with God. Is this awesome? You say, well, but Sister Barbara, I was born with this. Okay, let's look at the Bible. There were things that, that, listen, the lame man laying at the gate. He was born like that. He'd never walked in his life. Never walked. And he was born like that. What happened with him when the disciples were walking by and he was looking for alms? And and, uh, they said, well, such as I have, I'm going to give you. 
get up and walk. And you know what? He didn't jump up and walk. It said they went and lifted him up and held him up. What did they do? They ministered. They were ministering to his physical man while the spiritual man was receiving what he needed to receive. And he began to run and leap. What happened? Their words. See, they could have said, well, we don't have any money and nothing else to give you, so, you know. Good luck. Good luck with the day. But they said, what I've got, I'm going to give you. And if I can give you anything today, what you've got is a fire laying in your mouth. And it is the fire of the word. For it is, it is not you and I. All glory goes to our awesome, wonderful, holy God. All glory and praise to our Savior, Jesus Christ. But oh, what he gave us in this earth. What he gave us. And all it takes is believing it. That's all it takes is just believing it. Woo, hallelujah. All right, let me look. Verse 7 says, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. Verse 8. But the tongue, say the tongue. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. So we got to see today that our tongue is either going to be used of deadly poison or our tongue is going to be used by the fire of the Holy Spirit to cause the things to happen in the kingdom realm. Amen. 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 Okay, now then uh, look at James 1. I just got one, one verse in uh, chapter 1, James. Stay right there. James 1, chapter 26. If any man among you seem, seems to be righteous. Wait a minute. If any man among you. Yeah, James 1, 26. Yes. If any man among you seem to be righteous, they seem to be righteous, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. I'm telling you today that it's an important issue in the eyes of God for us to watch over and guard over the fire that we've been given the power right here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs, Proverbs. Chapter 18. Proverbs 18, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now the reason it says a man's belly is not literally his belly. A man's desires, his, uh, his, his, his inward desires, his wants, his needs. It says that, that they will be satisfied with the fruit, in other words, the production of what he's saying, with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. And with the increase, and with the increase of his neighbor's sayings. Is that what it said? Oh, wait a minute. Well, his increase is going to come from how much the pastor has to say about him. No, that's not what it said. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What it says that his increase comes from his own lips. So let me show you something here today. Did you know that this is a powerhouse church? Our little church, uh, you know, and I, Jackie and I both have talked about this that we should be writing down all the miracles that we've just seen. It's just as regular. That we, we, you know, not just in this house on Sunday and Wednesday night, but people call us and we pray all the time. We expect God to move right then, don't y'all? Yeah. Yes, we expect God to move and he does. Amen. 
And, uh, and you know, we, we, should be, we should be making record of that. Uh, uh, you know, we've said that before, that we, we should be writing down all the things that happens in here. Because this is a little miracle church. But can I tell you, did you know, me knowing that, and me having confidence in this church, that I could have something that's going on with me, and I could say, okay, I need everyone to pray. I need everyone to come lay hands on me and pray for me today. And I'm believe. And uh, and and did you know every one of you could come right up here, lay hands on me, and pray for me the prayer of faith? Do you hear me? You believe it. But did you know that if I, with my own mouth, say, well, I hope I, I hope somebody could pray the prayer of faith for me. You know, I don't feel like I don't feel like I got touched. I don't feel like I don't think I really don't think that anything happened. I think I just think all of them needs to pray better. I won't receive nothing. Even though, see, even though, and see, the reason you need to get this, and I was sharing with uh, uh, with uh, Paige before service that I learned this from my dad many many years ago. Uh, that when you pray for someone, uh, and you know you believed, you prayed by faith, and they died anyway, or you know, or, or they didn't come out, or whatever, that then, then the enemy will come and say, it "Won't do you any good to pray again," because look what happened last time. But my daddy taught me this: when you pray in faith, you commit that thing into the hands of God, because it's no longer yours. See, you, you prayed and you handed it to God and now then the result of that thing is that here's me. I'm going to be believing you're coming out as long as you're breathing. Amen. And if, you're, if you stop breathing a short period of time, I'll probably be on that too, telling you come out of the dead. You know, you, you understand. But once you pray about something, listen, faith is releasing it and giving it to God. You, that's not doubting. That's believing. And I'm telling you, we come out one way or the other. We come out on top. Amen. Woo, I'm telling you, the Word of God is so awesome. Isn't it awesome? <clears throat> All right, let's, uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Are we getting this today? All right, Matthew 12. And I'm just going to give you one verse, and then, uh, then we're going to move on. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. 12, 37. This is Jesus talking. And he wants us to understand today, if we don't get anything else, he wants us to understand the power of our words. Not just in church, not just when we're gathered together, when we are out there living life to the fullest. When you're going fishing, when you're going to buy groceries, when you're, what, what are your words saying? Well, I hope we, you know, I hope we, uh, no, stop that. You need to be in agreement with what the word has to say about you. All right, Matthew, uh, verse uh, 37, 12, chapter 12, verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. Okay, now we're going to change this to personal. Everybody get ready. You get ready. By my words, say it. For by my words, I shall be justified. And by my words, I can be condemned. All right, let's do that again. By my words, in my own mouth, what I'm, what I'm saying will either justify me, either justify me or, condemn me. or condemn me. Let's do that again. My words, my words in, my in my own mouth, how I'm talking, how I'm, how I'm speaking, how I'm thinking will either justify me or condemn me. Did you get it? Did you get that? All right, last scripture. Turn to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. 
Now God's going to show us something how to break the holds of the enemy. You ready? Ready? Now we're going to talk about God's word. Is not my word like as a fire? says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Now, we're going to look at the Word of God. We just learned that our own mouth, our tongue, our mouth, how we talk is a fire. It can devour us or it can increase us. Is that right? Now, that's our own. That's our, in the natural. That's our own. But now we're going to look at the Word of God. It says that the Word of God is as a fire. And you can, in fact, I've watched Jackie do this. Jackie would be, uh, burn the debris, you know, that's brush and stuff around the place. And he would start it, and there would be, uh, be a small fire but as it caught on, the fire increased. Jackie didn't. The fire did. And it would begin to grow, and it would begin to change where the fire was at. It changed the debris to ashes. If you can see this today, what the Word of God does, it is a fire. It's like putting a fire on something and you as you speak the word you will watch the word consume that thing Amen. do you understand Amen. you know uh, we have a little granddaughter Lisa and I both have a have a little granddaughter she's six and she's autistic she doesn't speak yet Amen. yet yet, yet. She has uh, 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 every sign, every sign of autism. But it's just a sign. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Because that fire, that, that fire is going to be consumed by the fire of the Word of God. Amen. Do you understand? You say, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, no. You got to keep your mouth in line. Amen. Amen. And so he said that his word was like a hammer to a rock. <clears throat> and the Lord showed me this many years ago, that <clears throat> in this life you're going to have rocks of opposition. Amen. It's just going to happen as long as you're in this earthen realm. And so he showed me this. He showed a big boulder that was big, you know, like big, big boulder. And this boulder is between you and freedom, you and increase, you and health, you and prosperity. There's a boulder there. And the Word of God is like a hammer. So here I've got the Word of God like a hammer. And every time that I speak, which that's where the where, that's my tool, right? The Word of God is in my mouth. And so every time that I speak the word, what the word has to say about my boulder, it's like a hammer beating at a rock. But here's what he showed me. He said, as you're standing there and you're beating that rock with that hammer of the word and you only see a few and, and, and the rock is still there and you've got to make a choice that either you're going to lay your hammer down and just give up on that or you're going to look down and see the chips that are laying on the ground because it's beginning to break the rock down. You've got, to, you've got to commit to that thing that you know what, I don't care if the whole world is as a, as, and I'll use Jessalyn for an example because she battled uh, shingles and, and the whole world may say well you better get ready because uh, because it never really goes away and then you have flare ups and then there's this and that or she can take her hammer of the word and begin to beat that rock and say I'll tell you I'm standing on Nahum 1 9 that this cannot rise up against me again amen are we getting this today so, so listen, we've not only got the tool of the word, 
Because the word is powerful. It's more powerful than a double-edged sword. It is powerful. If, if I can't impart anything in us today, how powerful that the word of God is. But it is a powerful sword laying in the sheath. As, and, and it is helpless. It is worthless to you until you pull that thing out and you get in front of your rock and you say, you know what? See, I, I, I know this. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. It does not change God. It changes things. Amen? Do we get it? All right, stand to your feet. Look at your neighbor. Stand up and look at your neighbor. And say, I sure am glad you're here today. I'm glad you're here today. Amen. I'm glad you're here today. All right. Look at your neighbor. Stick out your tongue. <laughs> okay. Don't leave it out. Now, now then say. Now then say to your neighbor, you've got a fire in your mouth. And when you leave here today, tell them when you leave here today, use it. For the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are we singing? Okay, awesome God. Woo, yes. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. anyone in this house that you need prayer for anything, don't leave here the way you came. The Bible says if there be any sick among you, let them call the elders of the church. Not them with all the prayer of faith shall be prayed. Shall be. Isn't that wonderful? Shall be prayed. Has anybody got any prayer requests before I let you go? You need prayer? Yeah. All right. Well, come on. Come on, saints. Heaven above with wind some power okay. and love our okay. God okay. is an awesome God our God is an awesome God he reigns from heaven above with power and love
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk. me Lord teach me Lord to wait for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like an eagle shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint teach me lord teach me lord to wait for they that wait upon the lord shall renew wings like an eagle they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint teach me Lord teach me Lord to wait they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like an eagle they shall run and not grow weary they shall walk and not faint Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord, to wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Shall we do their strength? 
over our tongue? Yes. We're going we're gonna to keep it in line with the Word of God? Yes. Amen. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Do what? I, I don't want to say it over live stream. Yeah. I'll let them know. Yeah. Do what? Oh, Shelly brought more prayer requests up. Okay, we'll be in agreement. Uh, just want to let Bill Rogers know that Jackie and I are in agreement with you on that, uh, on that uh, decision. And uh, we'll be holding you up in prayer. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You ready for a blessing? Here we go. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to. And everything I put my hands to. God causes it to prosper. God causes it to prosper. Our children, Our children shall, marry the right the first time. shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and the powerful word of God and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I am full filled up and run it over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. See you Wednesday night. See you Wednesday. 